And we're back. And we're back. This is the Last Row Podcast, episode 51. Our Christmas special. <laughs> Merry Christmas, bad way. I apologize, everyone. That was, that was a favor to a friend of ours, Julio. So there you go. <laughs> Merry Christmas, bad way, and happy holidays to happy you. Happy Hanukkah to you. And ha- <laughs> I don't celebrate that. Oh, well. Hey, we're celebrating all of the holidays Happy here. holidays. Kwanzaa, happy right. holidays. We're very inclusive on the Last Row Podcast. If you want to look at us on our website, thelastrowpodcast.com. Well, not us, but there's no pictures of us. I mean, we, we could. We could make sure. that happen. Yeah. You know, would it really be us? I don't know. I don't know. On Twitter people, at the last. people go on our website? I don't know if we oh, even get any traffic on the website. Uh, <laughs> thelastrowpodcast.com, at the last row Pod on Twitter, Facebook. We've been getting tons of Facebook. Hot Facebook Hot action Facebook right now. Facebook action. Hot news Thank on you Facebook. for everybody that's... Uh, Leaving that steamy Facebook content. <laughs> Facebook.com. I just think of a pile of yeah. <laughs> steamy shit. <laughs> Facebook.com slash the last row pod. Google Plus. We, we get a couple plus ones on there. I don't even know what that is. You what know? about minus ones? Now, I don't know. Can you do minus? I don't know. We don't deserve a minus one. <laughs> iTunes. Um, iTunes.com or Apple.com. Look out. Download iTunes. Search for us, the last row podcast. We got a new review this week. Thank you for everybody that's Thank left you. us a review. We'll read that at the end of the show. We're also on Google Play Music if you want to leave us any type of subscription on there. And as I mentioned before, hit our links up to our movies in our descriptions. Ah, Helps the show out. Thank you so much to everyone that may or may not have clicked those already. Uh, Much appreciated. This is episode 51, Bad Way. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Yes. Good to be with you here. We've got the fireplace on. Absolutely. Nice and toasty in here. Presents under the tree already. Snowing outside. Yeah. You know, just... Uh, Tons of Christmas action right now. Tons of hot Christmas action. <laughs> it's hot action. Yeah, hot Christmas action coming up. So this is our episode 51, On Demand, colon, Christmas Extravaganza. We love those colons. Yes. So we're going to be talking about our uh, our top Christmas movies. Uh, we're going to call it our, uh, I'll put it on the video sh- the video store shelf test. We're Somebody's also- got experience with that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get into that. We're also, we're, we're, we're deep diving into Love Actually, the movie. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of the relationships that went on in that area there. Uh, we're going to talk about... What else are we talking about, Drew? You're going to hit me up with a game, aren't you? We're going to hit up with it's a game. A we, we got a game, real, real, or fa- real or Fake Plot Christmas Edition. Not I'm going to fail. Plot, it's, it's, a, it's a mini plot fiction edition of uh, Real or Fake Christmas. You know I'm definitely going to fail. And we're going to discuss um, some controversial is this or is this not a Christmas movie. I know this is an exhaustive, exhaustive topic, but we're going we're gonna to do a simple dive into that based off of... a. uh we got into a text message battle with a friend of ours, and we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> re live in this. We're gonna shatter some dreams right now. Are you about no. to shatter some dreams? No, I'm not gonna way? go gold dust on everyone and <laughs> yeah. sh- do a shatter dreams, but so we'll hit, see. hit me up with this video store thing because we talked about when we plan our episodes. Yeah, we do lots of planning on this show. You know, yeah. There's a lot that goes into these things. Oh yeah, I don't know if people I, know I, this or not. I I study and I I prepare for a good seven to ten minutes before each episode, right? <laughs> So <laughs> we have extensive notes yeah. here, but we were texting and, and you had mentioned to me something that used to happen at your old workplace. And yeah. I thought this was great so for the show. Back when I was in the movie business, Drew. So you, you still are. When I was a big player at, at, at Blockbuster Videos, Inc., every <laughs> every holiday season, every Christmas, we would have a, a shelf on the new release wall, a whole bay de- dedicated to Christmas movies for rentals. Right. So you think, oh, that's great. So so you can see Bad Ways recommendations, you would think. Right. Wrong. We would have corporate meticulously decide which movies were on that wall and what place to put them. Did in. they put them by your name though? Because I remember no. going to Blockbuster and some people had their name. It's like, oh, Jim, his recommendations are here. Oh, I think you might, you must have gone to a franchise store because we never got to personalize anything at our stores. It was all they, meticulously crafted by the by the men violation. Upstairs. Yes. So and that always bugged me because I always like you walk into like mom and pop video stores. You yeah. can see like, oh, there's Jared's section. There's Mike's section. There's Back in Michelle's college, section. that Mike's video yeah, place. right. So I never got to personalize my Christmas movies. So what I want to do here today is, say you had a shelf with five movies on a, 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 a row, what would be your five movies that you would put for your recommendations for holiday viewing? And I would, I did the same. Can I request the last row? The, no, you can't. <laughs> it has to be in the middle, front and center. See, there, see rows three and four were the money rows. They were oh, not the last rows. Man. We are the last row of all podcasts, so... <laughs> We're on the bottom shelf. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like the, we're in the back. The movies see uh, studies show that the movies on the bottom shelves of the Zulu release walls never get rated because who wants yeah. to go down there and bed down to pick just up like a movie? A, just like our podcast, right? Get li- it's on <laughs> we the don't bottom. Get listen to so, yeah. We got to raise our podcast up. So we're, we're in the middle, right? Not the top, not the bottom. We got to be rows three and four. Those are the, those are the eye level All right. rows. See, right? this is good retail yeah. retail uh, experience yeah. here. Yes, it's called blocking, Drew. <laughs> All right, you've got a lot of experience in this. I can tell. <laughs> 
So what we're doing is basically our, our top five movies that we would put on our rows for uh, the Christmas wall of a video store that doesn't exist anymore because who goes to video stores? Right? I, and that's a whole other topic for another yeah. day. I won't even get into it, but right. I miss that. When I become a millionaire, Drew, I'm going to open a video store. I don't care if anyone comes to it. I'm just going to open it. <laughs> call it Blockbuster. I'm going to call it, I'll call it Buster Block. Buster Block <laughs> yeah, Video. So, um, so would you like to start with our, uh, with our list? I will. And I'm going to give you, so I think we each put five together, five on each list. Let's alternate them. So that yeah. way it's not me blabbing for a half hour, which people will really love that. Which it happens a lot. It happens a lot. Yeah. But I'm going to give you my first one. And I have to give a shout out to friend and listener of the podcast, Kurt, for right. even knowing what this movie is. What up, Kurt? Just Friends. That's Just my number friends. one Christmas movie. Controversial first choice it's because Christmas. we're not sure if it's a Christmas movie or not. But it definitely it, I, is. I say it is. And go on. Why do it you choose Just is. Friends? Just Friends is a great movie. It's got Ryan Reynolds right in the comedic heyday. You have Dusty Dinkelman Dusty who skis in his Dinkelman. jeans. He obviously you know, skis in his Because jeans. everybody from New Jersey yeah. skis in their jeans. <laughs> it's, a, it's definitely a fact. We live yeah. on the border. So I've gone skiing in New Jersey and yeah. there's been lots of jeans there. Yeah. Um, I, uh, <laughs> uh, confession, I've skied in my Did jeans. Did you really? I, I've snowboarded <laughs> one time in my life, oh my and, it, and I had jeans on. I didn't know what? what I was doing. I'm never going to let you live that People down. People in Jersey, maybe maybe everyone who skis their jeans in Jersey are like first-timers. There's a lot of first-timers in Jersey, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's a thing, though, and Dusty yeah. Dinkelman definitely yeah. skis in his jeans. No, but it's got Amy Smart. It has um, Anna Ferris is awesome in it. Yes. Just It's the greatest. It's a great holiday movie because it's about this dude who grew up, was kind of the fat kid in school. Always was like the platonic friend of Amy yep. Smart's. Friend zoned. Long story short, he got friend zone forever. He grows up, goes out to LA, becomes his big record exec. We've talked about this on the show before. It's on Netflix right now. So Christmas yes. time, I implore you to go out, watch this movie. It's very funny. It's it's just a really fun movie. And yep. it's a great Christmas time. It's like Christmas in Jersey. There's lots of comedic elements to it. And Ryan Reynolds is great. He's awesome yeah. in it. He's I guess very, it, very funny. It's the perfect like coming home for the holidays type movie. Chris and Chris Klein is is incredible in it. He plays his bit part. Yeah, Chris Klein, right? Yeah, Chris I, Klein. I always want to say Kevin Klein, but it's, it's like cr- that's it's Chris Klein. It, <laughs> Definitely Chris Kevin Klein. Klein. No, Kevin Klein's the guy from Wild Wild West. It's Oz from American yes. Pie. American Pie, yeah. and it's like somehow he wasn't that bad of an actor in American Pie. Like he wasn't great. Let's let's be real about he that. He wasn't good. He wasn't good. <laughs> but somehow his Kinda abilities bad. went like backwards. Yeah, like he really devolved yeah. somehow. Yep. But like, like an aging running back. Yeah, like or, or like Benjamin wall. Button. He hit the wall at thirty. Yeah, like yeah. it just it it makes no sense. But he's hilarious in that movie. He plays his bit part. You just have to see it the to villain. know. You know, just go out and watch this movie and let me know. Kurt knows about this movie. I want to say thanks to Kurt because he suggested that we should watch this. Maybe we'll do this in a in a future episode coming up. But yeah. um, definitely include it as my number one. All right. So I'm going more traditional for number one. Uh, Home Alone 1 and 2, I'm grouping them together because screw it, why not? You know, we did an episode of Home Alone 2 like maybe two years ago. Yeah. And I recommend, like, that's, I feel like that's one of our like top three all time episodes. I recommend you go out and listen to that, especially for the holiday season, not I to shill our own product. I haven't listened. <laughs> you're a shiller, yeah, man. You're shilling. Yeah. I haven't well, listened to that one in a long time. It was time. really good. I feel like it was, it might have been our first good episode. If I'm, yeah. you know, if I'm bashing us, like it might have been our first good episode. It was like <laughs> all, episode five. All those other ones are yeah. crap. Yeah. Not we'll that they put, were crap, but like we started to gain our footing there. We'll a put bit. a link in the show notes. Yeah. So what, what about one of our early episodes? But what about those makes it it's, Christmas? It's for just you? classic. I remember just getting the VHS for Home Alone 1 along with the Pizza Hut pizza, or there's like a coupon for Pizza Hut. Did they do a co promotion yeah, with that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And just the fact that, you know, growing up, the character's name is Kevin. My name is Kevin. And like really resonated with me. I always like pictured myself being alone for the holidays. I'm a loader myself. I love being alone. So <laughs> I always wanted to be home cream. alone. Yeah. <laughs> to the point where I was probably be scared. If I was ever left alone like that, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> let alone be bugged by robbers. Yeah. But yeah, just the, just from pure nostalgic factory and, and uh, just uh, beating up crooks, you know? Yeah. That, that is probably one of my favorite episodes looking back. You know, Christmas is a time for reflection. Yeah. Let's reflect a little bit. I think that's probably one of my favorite. We ha- that was one of our first games too that we played on the show. Yeah, Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive. Yeah, Dead we or Alive. Harry tricks. and Marv. Yeah, right. we never did Home Alone one. Maybe we should go back and do that sometime. Actually, too. we did two. Two is pretty much one. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe there's I mean, no we, reason to do you, one. We, we caught a lot of flack for that, but yeah. we'll we'll leave that for another day yeah. too. Right. So uh, that's my first. So my next one is it's more more really a Christmas movie. Yeah. And I watched this pretty much every Christmas since I was a kid. This is like required viewing in Drew's household. Christmas Vacation. Yes. Classic movie. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Jelly of the Month Club. Just everything about it is really funny. Um, the original Vacation is a great movie, but I feel like this one is better. It's better in every yes. way. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got so many yeah. funny things about it. It's the perfect Christmas like family movie. He's just... Chevy Chase is the ultimate family man. He wants Ultimate to, optimist. 
He wants yeah. to get the pool for his family, you yeah. know, just everything about it. And I mean, yeah. I don't want to run through the jokes, but stupid little things like him going to get the tree. It's like, do you think this is going to yeah. fit in our house? It's like a 20 foot yeah. tree. Obviously the Christmas lights fiasco, everything, him not getting his bonus. It's all, uh, everything about it. The side, the side yeah. story of like, uh, you know, Elaine from Seinfeld and like, yeah. what is it? David Duchovny or oh, somebody? Yeah, they're, they're ultra modern house. <laughs> and that ultra yeah. modern house looks like yeah. a piece of crap oh, now. Yeah. They have like a, like a tape deck and it gets yeah. wet, you know? And yes. It's just everything I, about it is really, really good. No, Such a good movie. No offense, Drew, but I feel like you are like the future Mr. Griswold, where Am it's I? like you're going to have your family <laughs> and you're not going to be able to get the lights to work right. Oh, I could see you it. You know, and all that. And I could see you wanting the pool for your house, but I can the, see the bonus check just doesn't come in. Like, yeah. I could see that for you and your little family. No, it's like, it's it's definitely a good movie, and I think everybody can relate to it on yeah. some level because it's about bringing your family yeah, together. All he all he wants is, is to just... Make Christmas perfect. And he's got like yeah, the in-laws are coming. His yeah. family's coming. You know, like yeah. my, my favorite line of the whole movie is uh, <laughs> shitter's full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember like I've said that like outside of work or uh, outside of like uh, this podcast, outside yeah, of yeah. things, just in life. It's like such a great, great yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, and, and that's just a and good movie. That's the other thing. It's like it, 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 it doesn't like bash in-laws it like it, it just makes you realize that yeah all your whole family's crappy not well, just the in-laws but, but everyone's family's got problems everybody's got yeah. quirks right we're all Everybody. weird we're all, yeah we're exactly all weird. and and i think that's that's the Another best part of that and me. it's truly a christmas movie because it's about christmas there's christmas dinner on it too yeah like it's it, there's no debate about whether this is actually christmas yes. or not yes. so what's yours uh i'm gonna go elf for number two good movie and um so i liked this movie when it first came out actually um another funny quick anecdote about blockbuster Blockbuster was very notoriously stingy with giving their movie movies to to employees, right? So when I first started at Blockbuster, Elf was like brand new, like on the shelf. Like maybe it was like maybe we got it in like three months or so, and we had like two hundred copies of it. And I came in right around the holiday season. I started in like November, right? So <laughs> as a holiday bonus, everyone got a copy of Elf, like to give it away, to give it away. You know, for all the employees, like oh, that's great because they never give movies away. Yeah. So it's like oh. We're getting a movie that's great, but not you, bad way. You've only been here three weeks. You're still a, you're still a probationary employee. You don't get a copy of Elf. What does that mean? <laughs> I, I hadn't put in enough time to get the Elf copy. All right, let me let me say this. That's how bad this company. That's why they're out of business. They don't by the exist way. anymore, do they? That's or why they, maybe they have on demand something. That's why when you went to a blockbuster, the employees didn't give a shit because of <laughs> things like that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the Hollywood video, do they do they operate the same way? I hope I hope they treated their employees let better me, and gave them copies of Elf. So let me ask you this, and and I don't know how this works, right? But because I I, I worked at a, at a theater, not yeah. not a, a video store, right? Yeah. I was always jealous because you guys got paid more, oh, of course, and it seemed like you had it a little bit better. You the didn't big bucks. You you guys had a, had a nice little time. You got to talk to the customers. I like, started at seven fifty an hour. That's, see, that was my starting I, wage. Man, I can't even go into <laughs> the, the dollars that I made, but it was a lot less than that. Um. But but yeah, so let me ask you this. What did they do with the movies when they were done? Did they send them back to some no. main place? I'll tell you what they did. So, okay, say we have 150 copies of Iron Man, right? We got 150 rental copies of Iron Man. After a, about a month of rentals, they would put them to previously owned, where we'd take them and we'd sell them for sell like them. half price and people would buy them. Those, when those bought, didn't sell, say we have like 40 left of the pre-owned, we would get a thing, for, a memo from corporate to take the... the about 30 or so of the Iron Man's run them through a disc destroyer, what? put them in an envelope and send them back to corporate where they could count and make sure they got all 40 copies so after they're destroyed. Yeah, we would have to destroy the movies, not keep them for our own. Ah. And they would count if we didn't have exact if, if 40 weren't exactly in an envelope when they went to corporate. Someone had to have answers. See that. That's, where's this? Where's the fortieth copy of Iron Man? That's like taking food that you made. Oh, we made an extra plate of food. Yeah. Hey, there's this guy out here that's really yeah. hungry. He could really use this. No, throw it away in front of him. Here's the employees who would love nothing more than if you just threw them a bone, right? Yeah, that would be. Uh, give me a copy of Iron Man. Give me a copy of Elf, and we would be happy, right? I'll tell you who. Wouldn't and they just stopped all over that. Netflix wouldn't operate that way. By <laughs> Netflix the way. would not destroy Netflix their copies of Iron Man. Would not Man. destroy that. They digitize them yeah. and then stri- <laughs> stream so, them. So back to Elf, right? Yeah. So I, I liked Elf all right. It was it was like peak Will Ferrell at the time, and I, th- I liked it all right. Nothing too major. Tyrion right? Lannister. Zoe Deschanel is very 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 homely, very beautiful. T- Tyrion Lannister, man. Girl next door. Tyrion Lannister's in it, right? But as my nephew grew to make it his favorite Christmas movie, it became sort of a tradition to watch it every year. I grew to like it even more every time I watched it. Yeah. I, I so think it's a family a great movie. thing for me. That's See, that's a good... Yeah. That's what Christmas is about, that's man. That's what it's about. That's what the holidays are about. The Being holidays. with your family. Yes. This is, that, that's good. I like that. That's sentimental. So I'll go on for number three for you. My third is something we're going to talk about a little bit later. 
and I don't know if this is in an order really. I just these are the orders that I the order of some things that I kind of stream of consciousness, right? Love Actually. This is a type of movie yeah. that I would have never watched on my own. Right. But it's a movie that I watched with my girlfriend at the time, now wife. The last wife. Love the movie. It's actually pretty good. You know, the first time I saw it, I was like, I don't know about this movie. Right. But the more that you watch it, the more you find things that you like about it, the more you pick up on. I really like this movie a lot. Well, so. the, the best part about I could, the best compliment I can give this movie is uh, there's so much going on. It's never slow. Yeah. And there's it's, like, it's, it's very quick paced. There's for, like 10 it's relationships. Like a freaking two and a half hour movie too. Yeah. Longer than I ever wanted well, it to I, be. When I went to watch it again, like I was like, oh my God, this is pretty long. God, it's so long. I've, I have this thing where I'm falling asleep in movies now. This yeah. is like being a dad, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm falling asleep in, in the comfort of my home. So I actually made it through this and I wasn't tired. It's it's a good movie. It's actually a yeah. very good Christmas holiday season movie. Oh, it's so. not just being a dad. It's called Over 30. Yeah. It's called Over 30. <laughs> once, you go, once you go over 30, man, yeah. it's all down. I imagine when we, when we go 40, it's going to be even worse. You're going to fall asleep yeah. at 6 p.m. And you yeah. had dinner. It's oh, like man. you fall asleep at the dinner table. Dinner at 4, man. Dinner hey. at 4, sleep at, sleep at 8. <laughs> That's Face in the mashed potatoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your next movie? Uh, I'm gonna go very Harold and Kumar Christmas colon 3D colon 3D. <laughs> yeah, it's got a good colon. I mean, it's it's not your conventional Christmas movie, but the thing I've had about Harold and Kumar is they were never supposed to be good, right? So when Harold and Kumar one came out, I saw the previews. I was like, this movie's not gonna be good. We went to see it on a whim. It was like the funniest movie of all time. Oh yeah. Then the second one came out, Guantanamo Bay. All right, the first one, they kind of got lucky. They're kind of pushing it with the sequel. Why does this movie need a sequel? Sequel is borderline more funny than the first. Right? Oh, absolutely. Right. And then the holiday Christmas 3D comes out. We're like, all right, first, a like Christmas-themed Harold and Kumar with 3D, stupid graphics. Why do we need this? Hilarious. We saw this in the theater. Yes. I remember this. In 3D. In 3D. In 3D. And it was good 3D. Yeah. You didn't, it didn't have to. We, you, you don't have, Obviously, when you watch it now, you don't have to have 3D glasses sitting next to you or anything like that. But it's just... They just kept the joke going. It yeah. Just continually made it better. They, they made Neil Patrick Harris better. They got Waffle Bot thrown in there. And it was a really good like message, I feel, of, you know, one guy has, has his life together. The other guy kind of does it. And we kind of like, they, they, they find a way to meet in the middle. I like like Danny Trejo is, uh, what's her name's dad? Yeah. That's funny. Right. Like the Waffle Bot is, yeah. we talked about Waffle Bot on our robots episode too. On the, on the too. best robots. Yeah. It was, Go it back was and the top watch 10 that. robots list. That's a great, great yeah. robot. Like right. it's making you waffles. It's adorable robot. Yeah. It's really good movie. No Patrick Harris hilarious. Yeah, so as it. far as like all rated Christmas comedies go, there's not that many of them out there. There's a few, but I feel like that's like all the tops of my list. Yeah, I, I love that movie. It's really, really good. Go on with your four. So we did this episode. I don't remember what number this is, but uh, definitely required Christmas viewing in my household. And I feel like we'll talk a little bit about movies that maybe are a little overrated. Yeah. I feel like this is underrated, or maybe it's becoming too much of a hipster thing now. I hate no. to say this, but I liked it before it was good. I liked it before yeah. it was cool. Sure. Jingle all the way. Jingle all the way. Everyone that listens to this show knows that I'm a big Schwarzenegger fan. Love this movie. It's got yeah. Phil Hartman creeping on you know, neighborhood mothers. <laughs> we talked about this at length in our old episode. Yeah. That might have been like episode three, actually. It was really that we short. Did. Yeah, it was really, really early in our We'll put it. that in the show notes, too. Um, you know, if you go back and listen to these, I don't know how good they are, so we'll, we'll have to see. Maybe yeah. they're like awkward. Yeah, they're probably but, um, a little awkward for sure. But yeah, that that's one of my favorite movies. I love Schwarzenegger in it. It's got Jake Lloyd, the kid who grew up to become a criminal somehow, was Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> go look up his mug shot. He looks really, really angry. Phil Hartman's in it. It's great. It's just a great movie. And I think one of the TV stations, like they play a Christmas story for like 24 hours straight. Yeah. I'm pretty sure one of the channels, it might be TBS, is playing this movie 24 now, hours straight. Now talk about a deserving 24 hour right. loop. That's what I'm saying. You got Sinbad in there. Yeah. Everything about this movie is so funny and great. Yeah. It's it's just great. It's Arnold punching a reindeer. Come on now. Yeah. Arnold was so good at making ridiculous plots watchable. Right. right. This is the perfect example of that. Because he he himself is is ridiculous. And Tuba he's, man. he's got the the charisma. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just he's a mattress salesman. How good of he, how good he is at that, I don't know. <laughs> kind of a deadbeat father. Yeah. Like the story is yeah. good and Orcaholic it's funny. Dad. Like the underground Santa ring where they're making black market toys. Yes. Like everything about Big this show. movie is really fun. It's about Christmas. He's trying to get that toy for his kid. Yep. Reminds people of growing up. What's that toy that you needed? A hot toy. Yeah, it's just, this year it's the ADS Classic. I'm sure people yeah. are punching each other in the face right. of an ADS Classic. I have a friend who got his hands on one, right? Yeah. And I told him, I think you're crazy if you don't sell it you right gotta now. You sell that thing. You're crazy if you don't sell it because you could make like three times the amount on it. Like it's going on eBay. I was like, just buy it again in three months when yeah. it's not hot anymore. Or right. Download an emulator. Yeah, just download it on your computer. <laughs> like I get it. Like I know it's a cool thing, but 
you can play yeah. what you play now yeah. and then get it later. Yeah. There's no like anticipation. Money. Like you've already played Punch Out before right. in 1986. All right. You can wait another month. Like I, I get it. Like <laughs> I get it. He wants to play, you know, but it's like for me, I would probably sell it, even though it's kind of scumbag to sell something like for yeah. triple the price. So maybe I'm kind of regretting see, what I'll, I'm saying I'll, here. I'll see, I'm a follower to where if everyone's doing it, I'm going to do it too. All right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> see, now here's the thing. I'm all right with selling it, but I'm not all right with people who buy like eight of them. Yeah. No, no. He didn't sell buy eight, eight of them. them. That's what the problem is. He got one and he yeah. said, hey, I saw this was going for like three times the amount. Should yeah. I keep it? And I was like, I think you should probably sell it. But, you know, it's not mine. <laughs> I might have my original ideas in my mom's attic. I could probably sell that right You get now. the RF adapter, yeah, man. The RF adapter. That up. Got the AC plug. <laughs> or is it DC plug? I don't know. I don't know. Call up Nikolai Tesla. Yeah. Um, so What's your my, next one? My number four is Scrooged with Bill Murray. Great movie. So we got A Christmas Carol. Uh, the, I, I think is the best take on A Christmas Carol. Um, Roger Ebert famously bashed this movie on his review. He gave it like a one star. Why? Zero thumbs up, negative thumbs up. He thought it was too mean spirited. And maybe he's right, but I don't know. Maybe it's the kind of personality that I am. It was, it's very dark, obviously. Bill Murray is such like, he's the worst kind of Scrooge in this movie. And I don't know. I, it was a very dirty and grimy looking movie, but that I, I, the message came across fine at the end, I feel. And I don't know what else there's to say. It's, but what a, it, it's Christmas Carol. What's so bad about it? I don't get like that's what the it's, story it's mean spirited. It, it's it's very mean spirited. It's very grimy and dirty and very like eighties scum. Kind, but I don't kind of, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know about the scum. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, if you if you rewatched it, I mean, I guess the soon. taxi driver looks filthy. No, the whole city's pretty filthy. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, most cities and, and are. Bill Murray's like he's a stick and rich like uh, TV TV executive. He has the greatest hair ever yeah. in that movie. By yeah. the way, it's it's straight like like puffed mullet. Yeah. Like off of Ghostbusters yeah. 2 set. It's and, so good. But I love that movie. And, and the ghosts of Christmas past and present. They, they beat the shit out of him and all that. Yeah, like I, get, I guess. I guess him you're in the right. face, Kick it, him in the balls. It's a whole thing. But, he, but he's got a positive message in the end. Yeah, it all comes, it all comes together in the end. Um, and so, Bobcat Goldthwaite's in it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> speaking of which, my daughter sounds like that yeah. right now. She's starting to talk and Wait. she's just, she's like. Ah. Yeah, we have Bobcat in the, the studio here today. <laughs> there he was. Oh. Hey, Bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> that is no 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 i love that movie i'm glad yeah. you put it on your list it's on netflix yeah. too by the way yes it is great movie great movie I, and, uh, yeah i end up watching that every year like i don't i don't mean to it just happens and i always enjoy it so what's your last my last one again shout out to listener and friend of the podcast drew fellow drews man drew, we gotta stick together. together drew wheeler on twitter writes to us and asks for us to do santa claus which i think we might do at some point in the future too yeah. maybe this christmas season we'll yeah. see love this movie tim allen hilarious in it the idea of a grown man turning into Santa Claus is really, really funny. Like, yeah. it's just, and I think you can watch these movies from two perspectives. It's like when you watch a kid's movie, like, you're watching it as a kid. It's like, oh, it's Santa Claus. Yeah. Now, when you go back and watch this movie, you see, like, wow, that must suck to, like, yeah. become, like, a fat guy and not, not be yeah, able to no, shave. Yeah. Like, oh, you got to live at the North Pole. That kind of sucks. he's, like, a workaholic guy and he can't, like, do his job anymore. Like, it's kind of like what we did, went through with D3 for the last episode yeah, yeah. where you watch it from a different perspective. I'd be curious to watch this movie. It's been a while since I've seen it. I, we should definitely do it at some point. If we yeah. don't do it this holiday season, we should just do it anyway at some yeah. point. But but I love this movie. It's a it's a it's a really good one. I've never seen two or three, but I yeah, definitely have seen probably, the first one. No need to do that. I used to have this on VHS back in the day. It was a Christmas present from a family member, and I'm pretty sure I wore the tape out. It was yeah. that. It was that good. Yeah, I watched it a lot as a kid for sure. So what about your last one? Uh, mine's a, a little bit more uh, obscure, not obscure, but you know, lesser talked about. Trapped in Paradise. With uh, Nick Cage and Dana Carvey and John Lovitz. It's got Nick Cage, man. You know, I'm in. Three brothers uh, coming in to do a crime, uh, rob, rob a bank in a small town community, and they end up getting trapped there, and uh, they have the money, and they can't get out of it. For, I, I forget the, the scenario where they can't get out, and so they're kind of trapped in the, in, the, in the small town, and the people are so nice, they kind of get like, they start feeling bad because they stole everyone's About money. stealing the money. Yeah. And uh, everyone's so nice to them, and it's just, it's a classic tale of like, bad guy turned good. And um, I think it's that it captures the spirit of Christmas really well. John Lovitz is uh. So do you know what year this came out? Was it like ninety eight or something? I think it was earlier than that. It might have been it? like maybe ninety four ish. It's so Lovitz is like the ultimate nineties guy. Like yeah. I just remember him being in tons of nineties movies. He was in Big in the eighties. Like he was the guy <laughs> at the office. He was yeah. just a creep. But uh, I have never actually seen this all the way through. I've seen bits and pieces of it. Yeah, and it's I never love, on. That's the thing. I thought it was on Netflix for a little while, uh -huh. but I don't think it is anymore. It's not anymore. 
but it, I've I've seen pieces of it, and it's always been on my list. Yeah. So maybe this Christmas season, yeah. I gotta fire if you, this. One if you up like too. search for it on your on your TV search method thing, I'm sure it'll be on some channel somewhere, like yeah. ABC Family. You just gotta set a recording for it. I'm sure it's on somewhere yeah. in the next two weeks. So so let's let's run down our list real quick. Just I'll give you mine, and then just do yours to recap for everybody. But mine was yeah. just friends. Christmas Vacation, Love Actually, Jingle All the Way, and The Santa Claus. So what, what was yours again? Just recap for everybody. Home Alone, one and two combined slash, you know, sometimes they have the DVD where you have both. Like, that's that's the one I would pick. <laughs> <laughs> the dual layer. Yeah. Elf, Harold and Kumar Christmas, Scrooged, and Trapped in Paradise. So the double, double DVD. Yes. Which side is up? Like, I feel like they never, we never... You never know what side is up. I have famously, another episode we did in the past, The Girl Next Door. It's yeah. widescreen and yeah. four by three. <laughs> and no matter what, yeah. whatever side you put in, it's the yeah. wrong side. Because different DVD makers make it different things. Sometimes the side up that you're reading is the one, and sometimes the side down is the one. They, they never uniform it. They yeah. never uniform it. It just says this side. It doesn't yeah. say this side up. So is yeah. it that side so you put it down on the bottom? Like, so it reads yeah. the laser? Yeah, they never uniformed it. They never so did. They should have. They should have come up with a standard. Like we're talking about, you know, taking away headphone jacks on on phones. Like yeah. that's that's whatever. You know, you need a DVD. You're gonna put a disc in. Tell me which yeah. side I need. Not I unlike need. our friend Jeremy, who had a Blu-ray of the Ultimate Edition of Batman versus <laughs> Superman, and p- chose the wrong option in the oh, menu, man. and thought he watched the extended version. Come to realize he did it, so he watched See. the extended version right after. So he actually spent seven hours this on is, Batman. <laughs> this is the dangers. <laughs> this is the dangers of digital. Digital right. video, my friends. So can we tell the story? Are we going to blow up Jerem's spot? No, I, I think I just did tell the story it's, pretty much. So it's, but that, that's inexcusable because it was in the menu. It was I just, in the menu. I just remember we, we had a group text about this movie and it was when the ultimate cut came out and we basically had said, <laughs> hey, you know, let me know what you think because I hadn't had a chance to watch it yet. And he's like, hey guys, it doesn't look that different. Like I think the runtime was exactly the same. <laughs> and I was like, are you sure? I thought they added like an extra half hour to the movie. And he was like, no, no, it's, it was the same runtime. And then like five minutes later, we get a text that says, oh, crap. Oh, man. <laughs> so like that way said, he spent seven hours on Batman v Superman. It's a so lot he of watched hours. it again in the same day. I commend him. And I also like, I, I, I can't believe he did it. <laughs> I think that would be your nightmare, wouldn't it? I would, I would have thrown movies? the talent. That would have yeah. been it. Although you might watch Civil War. We'll see. We'll, we'll see, see on that one. We'll see. So. We'll see if I have time. So we, we talked about what our Christmas movies are. There's a lot of debate floating around about what is a Christmas movie, what isn't. This yes. might be a tired debate, but there's a few movies that, that you have listed here. Yeah. And I think we should talk a little bit about, are they a Christmas movie? Are they not? What makes a Christmas movie? Right. Why so, would it be on your list or not on your list? Yeah, so uh, the movie on both of our lists that was kind of floating around the 5-6 range that ended up getting cut for both of ours was Die Hard, right? It's, it's the famous, yeah. thing, is Die Hard a Christmas movie or is it not a Christmas movie? We weren't going to talk about this, but then our friend kind of like, we were texting about it randomly uh, we had a group text about him being mad that everyone's calling this a Christmas movie. And it kind of reignited the, the argument, as it does every year. There's always a way for this argument to come back up every single Christmas. Should we just read? Should we just read his points first and maybe try to counterpoint yeah, them? Yeah, because I, I, I kind of disagree with some of his points. So we did a we did a, a contest two years ago or last year. Was it when we first started the show? We also got. I think um, it was in 2014. So in 2014, we did a contest too. So I think it'd be good to contrast the the points that you're going to read with the yeah. points that the winner of our contest, who got yeah. a really awesome, sweet yeah. figure of Vigo, Vigo from, from Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters too. too. Yes, the last row giveaway. So so hit hit us up. So I'll, here's what our friend Julio wrote. Uh, shout out to Julio. Uh, who is very much against Die Hard being a Christmas movie. I'm paraphrasing for some of his texts. Would you agree that Die Hard 1 and 2 and 3 are 95% the same movie? Would you agree with that, Drew? I, you know, I haven't seen them in a long time, but I guess, yeah. I, I would. I, I would guess, say yeah. they're basically the same movie. It's the same, same thing. Movie. Most yeah. action movies are, yeah. so I agree. So 1 and 2 are set during Christmas, while 3 isn't. Is one, is one really a Christmas movie, while 3 isn't because of that 5% difference? That's a decent point. Yeah. It's semantics. Yes, it takes place during Christmas, but it's not really a Christmas movie. And then he goes on to say, usually Christmas movies are released during the holidays. Die Hard was a summer release. Die Hard 2 was released on July 4th. This Christmassy aspect of it was... I can't speak. <laughs> I wrote it wrong this in the This Christmassy notes. aspect of it were not integral to the plot like other Christmas movies. It could be literally any other time of the year and the story doesn't get interrupted. Okay. I think he makes some good points. I, I don't agree with some of those points. So should I just get into it or should, do you want to read so JJ's? Let me, I'll, I'll tell you this. So I'll read JJ. So JJ, shout out to listener, friend of the podcast, JJ, um, who won the Christmas giveaway with his. 
This is the counterpoint to why it is a Christmas movie. At least yeah. that's how I took it. So yeah. he says, on a superficial level, it does take place during Christmas. The setting indicates Christmas. Lines of dialogue, gags, and fun moments are included that are reflective of and dependent upon it being Christmas time. Beneath it, though, holidays add an emotional weight to an already tense conflict. Ideally, Christmas is a time to be with your loved ones in a happy environment. Sadly, this is not always the case to some, as it can be very sad, lonely, and emotional. To take those extreme emotions and add German terrorists in a skyscraper, uh, take take those extreme emotions and add German terrorists in a tis- skyscraper. On paper, the juxtaposition is odd and turns some off. Those who want the holiday season to only be treated reverentially, anyway. Great writing, by the way, JJ. He used to be a movie reviewer all the way on. This is this is pretty good the stuff. Examiner. So then, uh, then he says, Christmas is about much more than presents, stockings, and trees. It's about being with those that you love and celebrating all that is good in this world. If it means killing Alan Rickman and a few scary Aryan dudes while saving a building full of people along the way, then deck the halls. I think That's he's a pretty pro, good I, argument I there. I think he's pro-Christmas movie. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think we got two, two opposing views here. So I'm in the camp of, it's not really a Christmas movie, but it's, it's enough of a Christmas movie that I'm okay with you calling it that. And I yeah. know it's kind of like playing the middle a little bit, but... How could you? The way I see it is John McClane is there because it's Christmas. He is put into Nakatomi Towers because it's Christmas and he's trying to, you know, try to um, unite with his wife or, sure. his, or his estranged wife or what? Are they estranged? I can't remember. I either, don't know. Either way, he's only there because cause he, he, he works in New York and he's there in L.A. for Christmas. So that he wouldn't be there otherwise. Also, the terrorists plotted this attack on Nakatomi Tower because it was Christmas Eve. There was a Christmas party there. Security was lax. Everyone was going to be in one spot easy to take over that building, right? You know, cops might not be on full duty. It's Christmas. There's a reason why they're picked Christmas Eve to rob the place. So it's about the setting for yeah. you is what you're saying. It's the timing, yes. the setting, the fact that they're being together yeah. as family. There is a reason that Die Hard 1 takes place during Christmas Eve because the terrorists plotted that attack for Christmas Eve for perfect timing for their, for their heist. So would you say they could have swapped it out for Easter? Or maybe has, Thanksgiving? Because, no, because you don't have Easter parties at work. You don't have holiday. You don't have Thanksgiving parties. What about at Thanksgiving? Work. No, you don't have Thanksgiving parties That's at work true. either. Christmas is like the one time. Yeah, it's that. like a holiday called a holiday party because obviously a lot of um, workplaces, you know, it's, it's multiple not, holidays. Yeah, it's right. holiday. It's not Christmas break. It's holiday grape. So add to that the fact that you sprinkle in all the little jokes, the ho ho ho, now she gun, this and that, all the ambiance. The fact that John McClane saves the day and allows all these people to be alive and to their families for Christmas, and I think you got yourself a Christmas movie. So, so what about this? Now, and I think the, Julio brought up a point that I think could be argued either way as well. Yeah, that it came out in the summer. I don't believe that that holds a lot of weight because releases of movies are all about making money, not about describing what the movie's about. For example, and I was going to get into this later. I know this fact, but. Um, Another movie we're going to talk about in a second, Gremlins. Oh, I can just gloss it over right now. Yeah, go ahead. People, just people, hit, people hit argue that Gremlins isn't a Christmas movie. I think it is a Christmas movie. Um, enough of it. There's enough scenes. There are Gremlins Christmas caroling, for example. There's a attacking a tree. Of, there's a, a tree attack. All sorts of things that involve with Christmas <laughs> to make it a Christmas movie. But that movie was released also in July because in 1984, there was um, they, that, that, that company didn't have a uh, competitor for the movies for the summer movie season. Mm-hmm. They were going to release it during Christmas, but they released it during during the summer to compete with other movies because they the studio wanted to aid all the So all they the, pushed it up. Yeah, they pushed it up because they wanted to compete with with the market. Man, this is like some good knowledge. You're yeah. dropping knowledge yeah, I'm, here. I'm stat checking here. <laughs> You're dropping some knowledge bombs so on this show. So release of a movie is not is not dependent on the plot of the movie. It's more about the marketing aspect. So do you it. think that it's possible that Die Hard was in a similar situation? Maybe they released it in the summer. Well, yeah, I don't know the stories of that, but I think it's very possible. So the whole July release thing doesn't hold a whole lot of water for me. I mean, I see what he's saying, and I, I can't completely disagree. I'm still kind of in the middle of this, and here's my thought on it. I think it's kind of like, People had said it was a Christmas movie, and then it turned into this thing where it's like everybody like tried to annoy people that didn't think that it was a Christmas yeah. movie. It's a troll move. I admit it's a troll move for people who hard who argue hard that it is. Yeah, like I think I'm indifferent to it personally. It's like you can call it that. I know I listen to a fantasy football podcast, and this is a topic on it a lot of times because one of the hosts doesn't 
agree that it is and everyone else says that it is and it's like a thing uh-huh. that it became a thing but this it's yeah. been for like years and i feel like uh-huh. now it's reached the boiling point of like the trolls yeah. are really out in full force yeah so for me i don't really care either way i just like the movie and i i do believe that if i had to pick if i wasn't going to side with the annoying trolls i would say yeah it's probably sure. a christmas movie to me but i think we, we even julio would said this right like we all said it. we kind of like used to agree that it was and now it's almost like the overwhelming majority is like well you're an idiot if you don't agree yeah because it's people just Taking a rise out of right, yeah, so being a dick, yeah. I don't care either way, personally, but um, I would have said back in the past, I would have sided with it being Christmas, uh-huh. and now it's not. But yeah, so so you say Gremlins is it totally is it definitely is. Yeah. What about another favorite, which you could argue is not really a Christmas movie; it's more of a Halloween movie. Yeah, A Nightmare Before Christmas. It has Christmas in the title. Yeah, but the director. But it says Before Christmas. Yes, yes, Good it's point. Before Christmas. Good point. I didn't think of that. And the director came out, I think, last year and actually said, it's a Halloween movie, people. Tim Burton? Yeah. Uh, actually, Tim Burton did direct this movie. Yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> You're like, the director? Yeah. <laughs> oh, a little, a little man by the name of Tim Burton? It, actually, it wasn't Tim Burton. Oh, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't Tim Burton. Okay. It's just Tim Burton. I think he wrote the story Tim Burton's or A Nightmare yeah. Before Christmas. I forget who the actual director is. Quentin Tarantino presents. Yes. It's one <laughs> of those Nightmare Before Christmas. It's one of those things. Yeah. No, um, no. So, so, so what do you think about that? So it, it's funny because you have two songs in there. You have This is Halloween. Literally, the song is This is Halloween. The song takes place in Halloween Town or the, 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 the whole plot takes, po- t- takes point in Halloween Town. It's the Pumpkin King that wants to be Christmas. And then you have the whole This is Halloween song. And then you have another song, which is um, What's This? Which is a, like a classic Christmas song. Yeah. But I, I'm of the camp of it is a Halloween movie that where the guy is, he is Halloween through and through. He just wants to go to a fantasy world. So you say no it's a, Christmas. It's a Halloween movie. movie, but I think it's one of the movies where you can, you're allowed to have it be a Christmas movie. Like I'll, I'll allow it. Like if you want to call it a Christmas movie, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with so you. So my, what I would ask the director, whoever it is, or Tim, Tim Burton, Burton, not Tim Burton, what I would ask not Tim Burton is yeah. how far before Christmas is this nightmare? Like how, how is it like, are we talking October? Because then if you're before Thanksgiving, yeah. if you're having the nightmare before Thanksgiving, yeah. then forget well, it. Well, I'll tell you, it's the plot of the movie is... I haven't so, seen this in so long. So the night before Christmas, like in, the, in Halloween Town, they wait all year for October 31st. and They have a huge celebration, the huge song, This is Halloween. It's basically like they're, they're planning for that song, the okay. choreography of that song. Yeah. And then the, like, the mayor's all there and he's sad because, oh, Halloween's over, 364 more days till Halloween. So, yes. It's November 1st is when Jack, the guy, uh, Jack, Jack Halloween, p- the pumpkin king, whatever the hell his name <laughs> is. He's like, it's November 1st. He's like, oh, man, I'm sick of Halloween. I want to do Christmas. So it's, uh, it's November 1st. You know, what? so it's like the malls. Can I tell you something? What? This is the war. Yeah. On Thanksgiving. The war on Thanksgiving. It's it's another aspect of people just like glossing over. Let me tell you, man, I know we're talking about Christmas here <laughs> because it's December. Yeah, but let me tell you about the war on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving is the forgotten holiday. That's like truly, let's be with your family. You don't get presents on Thanksgiving. Like little kids like Christmas because they get presents. Yeah, I like Thanksgiving because I get to share a meal with my family. Well, yeah, the meal's really good too. It's more of an the adult. Food's great. It's more of an adult, right? Thing. But you know, you got to hang out with your friends and your family yeah. on Thanksgiving. Like this is this is more. This maybe the so, start of the war on Thanksgiving. So I know we've taken up way too much time already. Before getting to the meat of this show. But can I say one more thing? This is off topic. Absolutely. And you're not ready for this. Um, <laughs> I'm not ready for it. There's a commercial on TV right now from Xfinity. Okay. Where it's a it's a grandma and a grandpa. And they're sitting on the couch and they're looking on Twitter. I don't know why they have Twitter. Do they know how to use Twitter? Yeah, I guess they do. So they're looking up their Twitter. They see their granddaughter. Their granddaughter's complaining about spending holidays at grandma's because, oh, man, grandma, grandpa, Christmas means no internet, no cable, this is awful. This is going to be hell. That kid is the worst kind of right? awful. So what do the what do the grandparents do before they come? They buy the fastest internet oh. and they get a big screen TV. They buy all this shit <laughs> just so this little brat <laughs> can be happy on Christmas with her TV and her you know Wi-Fi. What? That's called enabling. I don't want to be the old man here, but yeah, it is it is enabling. They spent probably a thousand dollars on TV and internet. You know what and, I would do? And streaming services. If I was those old people, I get a Wi-Fi jammer. Yeah. I would block that kid's right. cell phone signal. Yeah, screw that. Like, yeah. to make this girl, like, just you're placating to her, her, uh, her addiction to the internet. Yeah. You know what, kid? Get out of here. Don't even come to my house. Stay at yeah. home with your Wi-Fi. It's supposed to be a heartwarming commercial, but it pisses me off because it's like, That's who a- are you, girl, to bash grandma, grandpa on Twitter? <laughs> And just, then for have them to like placate you. They're just trying to make a nice meal for you. Right. Get out of here. You know what? 
that's a problem with live tweeting everything these days. Yeah. This is oh, my old man. Total old man. So, so, you started box. that sentence. I was like, oh man. So that, was oh, older man. Than me. that was an older that was the problem. That was older here. saying that I know. No, you know what? I would say this. Screw that kid. <laughs> I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut the fiber lines to the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. No one's having internet. No power. Here. How about no power? Let's get candlelight. <laughs> you like this heat, little girl? <laughs> Let's turn the heat off. Back in my day, yeah. we didn't have a refrigerator. We yeah. had an ice box. <laughs> Go help, go help your Aunt Cheryl with the cookies. Go, go wash your clothes in the lake. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Freaking buy the Xfinity oh, to, to make the brat do- See, granddaughter happy. Not, I mean, let me dial it back. I love the internet too, right? We wouldn't have a show without the internet. Of course. So but I'm not going to go to a family member's house and complain about the internet. <laughs> that's like the, that's, that's the opposite it of the is. spirit of Christmas. No, no. That, see, that's the problem. Like, and, and, and true old men would say this like, oh, these kids, they don't know what they had. You know? And I'm just saying, I feel the same way. <laughs> Screw that. Spend some time with your family. <laughs> anyway, we've been talking a lot, a lot about things. Uh, we're like 40 minutes into our show, but um, I want to dial it back to something else. We talked about, you know, family, friendships, relationships. I mentioned earlier Love Actually, right? So Love Actually is a movie that I first saw with, with my, my girlfriend at the time, wife now, but never watched it beforehand. I thought, man, I don't want to watch this movie. This movie looks yeah. like it's stupid. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a chick flick, like, if, at, at the center of it. But let me tell you, Bad Way, yeah. there's a lot in here for us to, to pick apart. So yes. just for the listeners out there, since, you know, it took a relationship for me to watch this movie. Yes. We've got a, we've got a relationship here, Bad Way. We're yes. in a relationship. Yeah, it's a podcast relationship. Yeah. It might be a little more than that. We'll right. see. I don't, maybe, yeah. maybe I have the wrong view on what this relationship is. But yes. I asked Bad Way to watch this movie, and you know he did, and that's that's true love, man. He yeah. watched this movie just for it's not, me. It's not my wheelhouse, but I did it for you. He watched this movie for me just so we could talk about it today. But yeah. you know, and, relationships are about compromise. You compromised, yeah, yeah. And, and also you compromised to where you wanted to do a whole a minute twenty on this episode just on love, actually. And I was like, hold on, Drew, <laughs> let's do it on demand extravaganza, and it could be a part of it. And that's called compromise. And, and that's that's what the holidays are yeah. about. You want a good relationship between your podcast hosts. Otherwise, who you listen to? A bunch of jackoffs. <laughs> so Don't care about each other. So I'll, I'll give you the quick synopsis and, and rundown. And then let's talk a little bit about some of the relationships in this movie. Because that's what the, that's what it's about. Yeah. So when you're watching this movie with your significant other, um, maybe you've never seen it before and you feel down. Like, oh, man, I got to watch this movie. It's long. It's two hours long. Listen to what we say. And you can have like arguments armed and ready that you could talk about with your significant other about these relationships, because there is a lot here to digest. And, and I would argue that it actually is a very good movie. And it is. No, it is. I watched it, and it was the first time I watched it straight through, and it is actually, it was very enjoyable. It was. So it's it Love Actually, 2003, comedy-drama slash drama. It's not a rom-com? I don't know. This is what Google tells me. Directed by Robert Curtis. IMDb 7.7 7 out of 10. What do you think? Yeah, I thought it's pretty Good. on point there. What do you think? You're not going to give low? it an eight. You're not no, it's not an eight. eight. I, I'd say seven. Yeah. Seven out of ten. Seven out of seven is good. Nine intertwined stories examine the complexities of one of the emotions that connects us all, bad way. Colon. Love. I don't get enough of it. <laughs> Among the characters <laughs> explored are David, played by Hugh Grant, the handsome newly elected British prime minister who might not know what the hell he's actually doing and falls for a young junior staffer, which sounds like a political scandal. Yes, it does. Martine McCutcheon. Sarah Laura Linney, a graphic designer whose devotion to her mentally ill brother complicates her love life. And Harry, played by Erlen Rickman, a married RIP, by Rest the way. Peace. A married man tempted by his attractive new secretary. I would argue that this synopsis here is probably terribly written because they left out the most important people. Well, if you're gonna write a synopsis to the movie, you might have a freaking novel on your hand. Yeah, but they picked the three like eighteen or nineteen main characters. I think Sarah is a story that just is in here. We'll get to that in a second, but Come on now. Alan Rickman, maybe you could mention him. What happened to, to Oscar winning? Nobody cares about Colin Firth. <laughs> no one cares. And I still don't care. What about Bilbo Baggins? Nobody cares about Bilbo Baggins. What about Rick Grimes? Everybody cares about Rick Grimes. Back then, nobody cared about Rick Grimes. They should, because they should, that story is a scandal in itself. Weren't Rick Grimes and Kira Knightley, they were relatively new actors and actresses I at guess. the time. Yeah, this kind of catapulted them to yeah. stardom. At least Kira Knightley. Yeah, baby-faced Rick Grimes. What's his name? Get, get a shave and Andrew the guy Lincoln. is uh, Andrew, Andrew Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah. Shave the guy, give him a haircut, and he's actually a pretty attractive right? dude there. Sure, sure. But you can even talk about the, the, the music guy. Oh, uh, Billy. Billy Mack. Billy Mack. Billy Mack. So let's just jump right into this. Within the first minute of the movie, Hugh Grant has an opening montage 
Yeah. There's like showing people in love and all this stuff. And he says, love is actually all around you. They say the title in the first minute. That's always a good move. It's a good it's move. It's a solid move. That's how start. you know the movie's, yeah. it's, it's on the way up here. Yeah. Like it can't go down. But I want to start with Hugh Grant. Let's talk a little bit rapid fire about some of these guys. Yeah. Hugh Grant more than others. Tell me about Hugh Grant. He's the prime minister of England. How would you rate his prime ministering based on what you've seen from the movie? Uh, out of what? Like one to ten? Yeah, like like a two. Like, would you? I don't know what they do in England. Do they impeach somebody if they're bad? Like, I, I don't. don't know. We have to ask our English listeners. Like, do you yeah. get impeached? I don't know. I don't like want to look it up in but the United I, States. Probably, probably. There's got to be a way to get the guy out if he's completely incompetent. So, would this guy? Would you vote to impeach this guy or not? No, you got to give him a chance, right? Like, we're not going to impeach Trump after two days, which which maybe we should. I mean, I some know, people would. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man, maybe. I but guess like, you got to give him like a month at least before you start judging the guy fully, but he did like almost go to war with America. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'll say. Like I got, and not, not to use Trump as an example, but I, yeah. I got some Trump vibes from him. Like he yeah. didn't really have experience yeah. in politics. He was more lovable than Trump, but just as dangerous and like uninformed. Like he didn't sure. seem like he had the political experience and not, not to get into the politics here, but like they wanted him to be tough on America and he kind of like slunk down a little bit, but then he, he jumped on... President Billy Bob in a press conference, which seemed like a political, like just suicide, yeah. you know, not to like say that yes. he couldn't have that conversation, but it seems to me that's the kind of conversation you have behind closed yeah, doors. Yeah, I do privately. Yeah. It's, and he, he bashed him on, like a, like it was a wrestling over, promo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a promo. <laughs> like John Cena would. We might be a small country, but we're a great country. Yeah. And it's like, and I don't disagree with him, but yeah. what was he thinking? Yeah. Over no. a staffer. Yeah. I don't know. It's like the, his whole romantic plot is basically non-existent. Like, it's in the beginning, it's in the end, and all the whole middle, it's like, it's non-existent to me. Does he have any idea what the hell he's doing? No, not, <laughs> no, not at all. He's waiting way over his head, and his first thought of becoming prime minister is, man, that's a hot assistant. That was like his first uh, first thought, that he couldn't get out couldn't get out of his head. I just, I just look at, it like, that press conference as political disaster. Yeah. Like, the world, the stock market would crash yes. if they had that. Like, these are two allies yeah. that he just threw this guy under the bus. Well, and I get it, Billy Bob's a jerk, and he comes in there asking... Hey, we're we're just basing our our stuff off the previous administration here. Now, come on now, like that. I mean, that's yeah. not cool either. From the from the little from what I've seen, Billy Bob seems like that president doesn't take no shit from anyone. I mean, he's a scumbag in everything that he yeah. plays. So yeah. you know, he rolls up there without his wife, starts hitting on this staffer that yep. Hugh Grant has eyes for. Yeah, goes Can't downhill do from here. Yeah. So he actually like did he fire her? He His, got rid the girl of her. He was in love with. Or did he like transfer her? I think he transferred her. He said something about, I can't really, it's not working out. Yeah. Like he got her transferred, I think, uh-huh. to a different department. And yeah. it was because I couldn't tell whether it was because he was upset because he liked her and he thought she liked Billy Bob or what. But there was there was some murkiness to this. Yeah. What, what was your take? What did you get? Well, no, he definitely didn't want her around because it's like he was like he didn't want to like fall for his assistant because it would look bad. Right. And I, that's understandable. But I didn't like that they were like fat shaming her the whole movie. Yeah, that was kind of messed up. That. She wasn't fat at all. No. And and like the dad even he said, Oh, she's got thighs. The big thigh or the, yeah. the, the one lady, she's like, Oh, you saw those thunder thighs. Yeah, it's like why she was that shit? She's not fat at all. I yeah, it was messed up. Yeah. I, I didn't like that either. But uh so so let me say this. So we'll jump through some of these. How would you give their relationship? At the end of the movie, they wind up getting together, right? Yeah. Spoiler alert. Uh uh-huh. they get together, he drives down every single house. Ask for them and says, hello, this is the prime minister. <laughs> is Natalie yeah. here? Does Natalie live here? Yeah. Total romantic move. Sure. Goes to her house. Do they stay together after the movie's over? Absolutely not. Like they show a month later in the airport. They're making yeah. out. He they doesn't make know out. her, really. They make out at the play. Yeah. Kind of a, another scandal. Like, yeah. It's like children's what play. What does he say? Uh, we don't want to overshadow the children's play. Yeah. And they, the curtain goes up and they're making out. That's yeah. like tabloid stuff here. I'm yeah. telling you, this guy would be impeached. Yeah. So they're not. This is not a long-term relationship. They don't know each other, especially him. He's like, what, 50? And she's like 25? Know. Yeah, that's kind of a scandal in itself. Yeah. I mean, at least from a political yeah. standpoint. Yeah, I, th- th- that relationship does not last So long. you're giving you no chance? Yeah, no I, shot. I don't think so either. I think maybe yeah. they date for a while. Maybe he gets out of office at some point. They break up. I don't yeah. think it would work out. I feel like maybe her career will like go on to other avenues. And she, and so one of them has to move somewhere. Right. And that's where it ends. Yeah, right. I, I don't know. I don't think that... Uh, her career is... She's so young in her career. I don't think that it's going to work out. No. So let me move on to the next one. Our good buddy, Rick Grimes, from The Walking Dead. Andrew Lincoln. Carl! Obsessed. Obsessed, bad way. <laughs> Obsession. Obsession. With his his best friend. Is his best friend? His best know. friend. It's not his best friend. His best friend's wife? Not my best friend. What, what's your take on this, dude? Yeah, he was the best man at the wedding. Kind of messed yeah. up. So it's a complete violation. I mean, it's obvious... 
So he's like in love with his best friend's fiance and now wife, right? And I feel like you just, you can't have that. You just can't have that. To even like think that is you're wrong. You're just wrong. Like, if you're if you're Andrew Lincoln. You got to get it Williams. out of your head. Yeah. So then he takes the creepy wedding video starring exclusively Kira Knightley. But it was funny the way that it got discovered. He never thought anyone would ask yeah. for it. Because she's like, oh, our tapes got hosed. I don't have any video of myself. Yeah. I saw you took a lot of great videos. Like, can I see them? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? You know what? So the mistake is like he he keeps pretending that he lost it, right? And yeah. She finally shows up at his house and she finds it in a stack of videos that were like by all his other videos. That video needs to be like under the mattress. That's like that's basically masturbatory like stuff, right? For him, <laughs> for himself, right? What are on those other tapes? Yeah, what how many o- how many other women do you think he close up recorded? That's what I'm lifetime? saying. Like he's pretty so good at it. Stalker, stalker supreme man. This yeah, guy, like, he's pretty good at it. Supreme stalker, a little weird. So not of other girls. How many videos of her do you think he has? That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. so how long have they known each other? We don't know. We could speculate. It's been a while. You would yeah. imagine because she says at some point, like, I thought you hated me. You never yeah. talked to me. You yeah. know, she's like, I know we haven't been warm. You haven't been warm to me since I started dating your friend or whatever. It's a total violation. And then to and then to actually speak on it and do like the Christmas, you know, the the, the postcard thing. Yeah. What, what, yeah, the poster board thing. What romantic do you think about that? move. What I do mean, you think about that? Look, that's that's definitely a romantic move yeah. if she wasn't married to your best friend. Right. And he's upstairs. Like, are you gonna like show up at my house <laughs> like with the poster board? All right. Like that's yeah. that's what this is. Yeah. Imagine that scenario. That's what this where is. I was like had eyes for the last wife, right? Yeah. And I've wanted to tell her, but like in secret to you while you're upstairs, like watching a movie. <laughs> We're like, not oh, friends anymore. Who is it? We're yeah, not, but, I mean, yeah. if I didn't know. Yeah. But wouldn't that be weird to like always hold that over me? Like to know that like, oh, I showed up at this house. Yeah. And, and the other weird scenario is, well, well, two things, right? So she shows up at, he shows up at, or excuse me, she shows up at his house, looks at the video, the video, it's like, they're all of me. And he's like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, he was so awkward. He's like, uh, I got to go. I got to cater to lunch. Uh, let yourself out. I was see, I was waiting for him to, like, say, like, the cheesy line. Like, I was trying to I was trying to create cheesy lines that he could say while she was watching. And I was thinking of, like, he'd say something like, well, you know, you're the star of the show. You're, like, you're so trying beautiful. To get like, you're so beautiful. I could the camera just couldn't take its eyes off like you. Like, he, he would really just, like, yeah. tell her right Yeah, there. those are the things that I was thinking in my mind. Like, what cheesy thing could he say to her right now to, like, try to make it better? But no. But the other thing too, so he shows up with this this tape. It's a yeah, definitely baller move to show up with this thing. If she wasn't married to your best friend, yeah. So what I took was he's always in love with her. Did you get a vibe from her? Like I wish you told me. Maybe exactly. I wouldn't have married that, this guy. She's like almost worse than him because it seems like she like was upset that he never told her before I mean, she got married. She was like so when she discovered. I expected this to be like oh my god, like we can't be friends anymore. Yeah. He shows up at the house, rings the doorbell, shows her this sign that says to me yeah. you are perfect. Yeah. I mean, she's kind of perfect. In a normal scenario, this girl would have been horrified upon watching that movie. (laughs) And she would have like walked out very like quickly and awkwardly, right? Maybe get a restraining order or something. Yeah. But then she kisses him. Yeah. Yeah, She kisses him. But it was a friendly kiss. I think it was a goodbye kiss. Yeah, it was. It it definitely was a goodbye kiss. Good job by... uh, Who's the, director, who's the director of this movie? Bob Robert Curtis? Howard, I don't know. Rob Curtis? Good Rob job. Curtis. Good job, Rob Curtis. Yeah. I mean, definitely was a goodbye kiss. Yeah. And I think, but then he was like, okay, it's done. This, it's not done, buddy. Now we can move on. Chapter closed. Can you really be done after that? The girl of your dreams I, kisses you? I think that he is going to be seeing less and less of his best friend until they're kind of- Not know, friends anymore. Not friends anymore. Just like they drift apart and the other guy really won't know why. And it's just going to happen. Do you think he deserves a punch in the face if his friend found out? No, as long as he doesn't act on it any more than he just did. I mean, I think he acted quite enough here, well, you know, as as he says, you know, Christmas is the time to tell the truth. Tell the truth. I mean, it's the theme of the that's movie. that's why it's a Christmas the movie right the there. Movie. Yeah. So, yeah. And total get, violation. Yeah, and don't get me. Don't get it twisted. If the guy saw the video. Oh, it, he deserves a punch beyond because make no mistake about it. It's a very sexual video it, it without was. What, 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 as, as sexual as it could be with having clothes on. Remember, <laughs> I should say. It's very like it's very it's 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 wank bag for Rick Ryan's material. So what it, what is that? Laura Linney sees him at the wedding filming, and she's like, yeah. "Do you love him?" She thought she was, he was in love with the, yeah. His she thought he was gay because yeah. she she saw the love in his eyes. She she thought it was impossible that she, that he could love his best friends. Do you think she knew? She knew that he loved somebody there after after oh, it was well, over. Well, if he said he's not gay, I thought they were going to get together. Actually, I guess that the guy. Happen. 
no, Rick Grimes and Laura Liddy. Like at that oh, scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey. But uh, that never happened. I'm in love. Yeah. I'm looking for love. She's looking for love. She's looking for someone younger. Maybe they younger. get together. She's looking for someone younger. Missed opportunities, Robert yeah. Curtis. So anyway, total violation. Um, we'll speed through some of, some of the rest of these. Billy Mack, the washed up singer. This yeah. dude who's got this number one hit who he doesn't, he basically DGAF. Yeah. He mailed it in, doesn't he care knows, anymore. He knows the song sucks. Guy's like washed up. Yeah. Who is this guy supposed to be in real life? Like, I got the impression that it was Ozzy Osbourne or somebody no. like that based on the posters. He's too, like, poppy to be Ozzy. He's more of a, maybe a Bowie kind David of. David Bowie? Maybe a but Bowie. Bowie's like, you could argue he's even more successful. Yeah. I don't know. More of a spring, like a British Springsteen, if yeah, you will. Okay. Something like that. Well, I, 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 looked up some, I looked this up online and I was reading about this because I, I have questions for you about whether they were actually in love, him and his manager. Yeah. And I saw somebody posted something really snarky. They were like, oh, yeah, this guy's like Phil Collins. If Phil Collins was good. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah, well, Phil Collins is a good, is, is a good example. It's like, tell us what yeah. you really think, you know, yeah. Phil Collins. Collins. Phil Collins is just fine, all right? Phil Collins is good, man. He's doing, he's, Phil Collins is all right. He's fine. He's doing just fine. So did you get the impression that, and, and I think maybe you have a decisive answer on this. I think it's yeah. a little gray. Is this guy in love with his manager when he no. professed his love at the end? So at the end, he professed his love, but I think it was more of like a, like, I, I totally I'd appreciate you. Like uh, he's basically his story is he's kind of like a loader. He's all alone. He can't find true love because he's always on the road. He's always like with groupies or whatever, all fancy parties, millions of dollars. And he realized the one constant in his life is his manager who will do anything for him. Yeah. So I think it was kind of a gesture of, listen, I, I always put you down. I, I don't appreciate you. And I just realized during this Christmas at the Elton John party that I love you, dude. It's kind of like, I love you, dude. So it's, right. it's kind of like us, right? Yeah, like we just, sure. We're in love in a yeah. podcast sense. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's yeah, it's not a gay thing. I think it's a, and I love you, dude. Like, I really appreciate you. I actually would have liked it better if they, they did get together. Because I think that's a good yeah. match, right? Like, it's the guy always supported him. I think it would have been better if they got together and said, hey, no. you know what? I love you in, in a true love sense. Let's well, get together. I think it would have been a little disingenuous because I feel that... He is like a he's like the personification of a rock star. So he's like been there, done that, right? He's like okay, I, you I know, see tons it. of groupies. So I feel like that would be tacked on. That would be kind of I feel it wouldn't be true to character for his manager per se. Like okay, his, I don't think his manager would just go along with it because his rock star famous client no no wanted to kiss him. Or see, whatever. I look at it as he always liked him. It was never like, hey, I just like you because you're asking me right now. Right. I, I always looked at it as, yeah. hey, he always liked this guy. He really yeah. supported him and he grew to love yeah. him. But it was it would have to be a two-way street and the manager never gave off any hits during the movie that, that he, he was might in love, love with his client. I don't know. He, I, don't, I don't think he did. I don't know. I think he he's had, just doing his job. Okay. And like he's uh, like he rolled his eyes like the guy, oh, here he is saying another stupid thing on the radio. Yeah. You're like I don't think there was ever love in his eyes. So we'll move on from that one. One of my favorite subplots, by the way. So anyway, uh, yeah. let, let's speed through some of the rest of these. Alan Rickman. He falls in love with his Rick secretary. <laughs> my secretary. Like, <laughs> what did you think? R.I.P. Yeah, man. I thought it was very well acted, this whole subplot. And it's the kind of thing where it's midlife crisis. He's like old, older, like he's in his 50s probably. Uh, his wife, similar age. They've got kids. Midlife crisis. He's got a hot young secretary that's constantly hitting on him. Like was, she constantly. Really, was she really that hot? Uh, she's British hot. I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just, you I don't felt, like the bangs haircut. I know. Yeah, you're, see, I'm I not into the bangs. It's just, it doesn't, she was pretty hot. I don't know. She's kind of hot. It's, I mean, she was, she was pretty. She's no Alicia Cuthbert. In Alicia Cuthbert in this movie. Yeah. I just, uh, she man. was no Kira Knightley in this movie. Yeah. That, that's the thing. She yeah. had Steve Comp stiff, stiff stiff competition. Stiff competition. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I feel like, you know, at the end of the movie, do you think he got back with his wife or no? I don't think so. I think it was, I feel like maybe the marriage was all, was all the Fritz already. Yeah. And then this Christmas season kind of like put it over the top because maybe, I don't know, the fact that he acted on his impulses and you should never do that. Did he do anything though? I feel like he did. Buy... I feel like he bought the necklace. And by I the mean, way, that's enough of, by a... the way, buying the necklace, the, the Mr. Bean seed, the cameo it was, awesome. was such a good seed. Mr. Bean with, with the wrapping of the present. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> he's so good. Yeah. There's no way he gives the, that secretary that necklace without also like consummating the gift. I mean, that dance is a little sexy there too. Yeah. They dance at oh, the yeah. party. That total in front violation. of his wife. That's yeah. you can't be doing yeah. that. And then and then the wife seeing him at the jeweler counter, potentially buying something, and then her getting the CD as the gift. Which the CD as the gift is the ultimate. 
Oh man, this marriage is done, isn't it? Yeah, but, <laughs> but it was like it was kind of thoughtful on its own right. Oh yeah, yeah, he, it was definitely a great CD. But she was expecting the necklace, right? Because she probably saw him buy it. They don't show it on hey, screen. All I'll say is there was multiple presents under that that tree. Yeah. What if the no. necklace was under there? It was like no. she kind of jumped to conclusions. No, but it, it was the right conclusion because off screen she probably saw him buy that necklace. It was yeah. the same shaped box. Well, she felt it in his pocket. Yeah. Because remember that's she right. put his that's jacket right. on yeah, the thing. That's right. So. The fact that she got the CD and not that, she like, no, okay, he bought the necklace. Where did the necklace go? That maybe yeah. it was under the tree still. Yeah. She should have went on a, like a rampage. Yeah, you know, Christmas Day, maybe she'd been, <laughs> she would have looked foolish. I don't rip, know. Rip all the, all the stuff up. Yeah. She never called him out, though, that night. It no, was she just didn't. later. She yeah. waited until you yeah, know, well, we Christmas don't e- night. We don't even, yeah, plus we don't even know. Like, it was kind of like the three months later thing at the, at the, at the airport. Yeah. Where she, they say, like, he says, like, oh, how have you been? Right. If they were not together, put it this way, my take on it is I don't think she's in the wrong to 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 divorce him. Oh well, yeah, I think it was coming. She yeah. seemed like a nice person. Didn't really you know, you, you can't be buying jewelry for other women. That's no. that's clear Let violation. Let alone your sexy secretary. Clear violation. Yeah. That marriage is is toast. Yeah. So anyway, jumping on to Liam Neeson, I don't really have much to say about Liam Neeson other than that he was an excellent actor in he this movie. He was the best actor in the movie, like as far as like showing grief. Yeah. Like maybe not the best actor, but like he did the best job. He was awesome job. And I like the subplot. Yeah. It was like, uh, you know, this tough guy, Liam Neeson. Yeah. You know, he, he showed good care for what, his stepson. Was he a tough guy in 2003, though? Uh, I or, guess. Or it, was, he, was he basically doing a lot of dramas? At maybe the time? he was doing dramas. I feel like he was doing mostly dramas. But at taken the time. probably wasn't until after. No. So his wife got taken from him in this movie. He couldn't get her back, though. No. They're already in Europe. There was no retake. They're already. Yeah. They're already <laughs> no take backs. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and it, but this was uh, like a subplot because in real life, his wife passed away. I don't know how far after it was, uh-huh. oh, wow. but it was very similar. Uh-huh. His wife actually passed away. Huh. So he, that's why he did all those so, taken Yeah, moves. so he had his adopted stepson, and his adopted stepson was in love with this like famous girl singer American that's in his chick. class, an American who was leaving the country, and like the, the, his plot was basically trying to get this kid to like express his feelings towards yeah. the girl. Good, good subplot. I good loved story. it. It's Jojen Reed from Game of Thrones. Yeah, so... Anyway, let's jump on to Colin Firth real quick. Oscar winning Colin Firth. Who? The Portuguese guy, as Who? you refer to him as. Yeah, the Portuguese guy. <laughs> the British guy that falls in love with the Portuguese chick. Yeah. Finds out his brother's banging his wife. You know, yeah. just, just put it bluntly. Yeah. You know, and I, <laughs> she, she was getting banged. <laughs> to use that word. You know, we do have a parental advisory on this. It's such show. a word. It's such a like, word. Only guys say that. Yeah. Like, you never hear a, 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 nice, a nice girl say that word. Please so. bag me. Like, you never <laughs> <Yes>. hear that. <laughs> You don't. You never hear that. It's a stupid word. It's a stupid yeah. word. It's like you yeah. know. It's a, you know what it is. It's a high school word. Yeah. We're, we should be. We should be talking about make love but, right now. And, but it should. It should only be used in a, a, an adultery yeah. situations. Like his brother was was banging his wife. Yeah. Like, like he, that makes he doesn't sense. bang his wife. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. makes love to his he wife. Makes sweet love. <laughs> he makes love to his wife. Yeah. But yeah, his brother bangs his wife. What do you bang? What do you bang? <laughs> When you're banging someone, it has to be quick. So it's like a it's like a cheating on situation. <laughs> <laughs> right? Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Adul- adulterous. Yeah. Adulterous is the way to put it. Yeah. And we're earning our real <laughs> advisory today. Hey, it's, this is a clean word. I All mean, right. Yeah. Anyway, go on. So, so yeah. So he, anyway, he's banging his wife. He's a writer. He goes to France like once a year, it sounds like, to, to, to like, write. write. Yeah. Falls in love with his the woman who's set to be like the housekeeper. She's like a Portuguese girl. By the way, she's like Portuguese uh, Anna Kendrick. I thought it was Anna Kendrick yeah, with a tan at first. Yeah, it like her a little bit. Yeah, I thought it was Anna Kendrick. He falls in love with her. I got the impression that she hated him the whole time. He's just very shy, quiet. They don't. They, they didn't understand each other. By They're the way, two different languages. I feel like no matter what love he felt, he wrote half a book. That's what I was gonna say. Oh, yeah. how do you how do you go back from that? Yeah, she left the cup up. It was obvious that was gonna happen. I was like, you. Oh my god. Total accident. He should have been so mad. Total I accident. Been, I would have been freaking furious. He said it was rubbish. I mean, it's rubbish. No, he's it, being nice, as you would call it. It's rubbish. He was being nice, dude. You ca- he you lost ca- half of his book. She and said it wasn't he, on a computer, which was his fault for not yeah, being on a computer. He's an idiot. This is 2004. Yeah. They have yeah. laptops. They have, you know, at the very least, word processors. Hipster, man. He, yeah. He's got the typewriter Who going. He uses a typewriter. It's, but, but yeah, he loses half the book. He yeah. says it's rubbish, so maybe it was crap. Well, maybe they get it back, though. It's like wet paper, but they, yeah, they, but they, they collect they, it. They, you know how I'm much sure of that the egg ran. went to the bottom of that lake the with ran. the eels? That was eels. That paper doesn't sink. That paper would get soaked. It would be on the bottom, man. It doesn't sink. I think you can't go back from that. I don't know how he yeah. actually fell in love. Like, unless he was, was like, already whatever. in love. Maybe she did him a favor. Yeah, Maybe he, that book was crap. He was already in love. So he falls in love with her. They wind up parting. They have a lot of like touching moments of talking in their own language. 
yeah. can't understand each other. It's yeah. a great subplot. He learns Portuguese, goes to, on Christmas, after he sees his brother who banged his wife yeah. at the Christmas house. Yes. They're like... And I love the, the part where they're like the kids. The kids are like, oh, Uncle Jamie's here. Yeah. And then he leaves and they're like, I hate, hate Uncle, Uncle Jamie. Jamie. I hate him. <laughs> I love that. That was great. So they fall in love. How far do you give this marriage? He asked the father for the marriage. How, how much do you give this thing after the movie's they over? They don't get married. You don't think so? No. Because again, they don't know each other that well, right? That's first off. They barely ever spoke to each other. It was purely like a lust thing. I feel like they consummated the relationship. It wasn't a bag. Yeah. It was very They sweet. made love. Yeah. And that's like, once you get that out of the way, and then they you actually start to have the relationship. You live together, you know, this and that. See where it goes. See where it goes. And I feel like it doesn't last very long. Do you think there was any truth to the, the scene where she was at the airport and she's like, oh, I picked the wrong American guy to marry. Like, I should have married this guy. Yeah, she was like, oh, look, look at this. Was uh, it Rick, Rick Grimes? Rick Grimes is, hell, is handsome. Eligible bachelor, yeah, Rick right? Grimes. Totally. And he's not above, like, having eyes for your fiance. Yeah. yeah what's the yeah. say? He's not going to show up to her, to their house. You know, when she, he's writing the book, he's yeah. like, Oh, hold on. It's Christmas. Carol is here. He got his, he reuses his signs. He's like, a lot of time. I'm on sure those. Colin Firth joked with him at one point off screen. Hey buddy, stay away from my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Little does he know. <laughs> stay the F away from my wife. Yeah, get the hell away from yeah. her. So anyway, I don't think they stay together. Um, there's you don't a couple, think so either? No, no I don't yeah. think so. I, I think that that relationship was 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 destined for failure. I mean, I think it's good. They had a good time, and I think they really were in love for a little while. But I think they realized that they probably didn't know much about each other. And as they got to learn, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wouldn't work out. We don't know much about Colin Firth in this, so we just know that he's a nice guy. He's a writer. That's it. Maybe she gets tired of cleaning up after his crap all the time after he's yeah, writing. That's the bulk of the relationship was him was her cleaning up his crap. So. Let's go through a couple of these real quick. Colin, the English guy that just wants to, quote, bang chicks. Bang, yeah, he's a banger. I'm pretty sure he said that, too. He wants to go to America and bang American yeah, girls. Yeah, because the British girls are too uptight. He's got to get yeah. out of here. Yeah. So, so that's a thing, right? Like, it's Americans probably want to go to England to say, yo, they'll love me for my American accent. And yeah. British guys want to go to America yeah. and say, they'll love me for my British accent. It's yeah. like a foreign thing, and, right? You know, it's funny. That his friend called him out and says, no, you don't have a charming British accent. Yeah. And he was right. Yeah. Like some British accents are very charming. Like yeah. Pierce Brosnan is like his dreamy accent, yeah. right? This guy sounded like a like a yokel. Le- yeah. like the, <laughs> yokel. The, the equivalent, the American equivalent is probably like some <laughs> southern like slack jawed yokel. Like yeah. from the, I'm thinking of the Simpsons character. Yeah. <laughs> hey Ma <laughs> <laughs> Like that's the British equivalent. Like his his accent was not very sexy as far as British people go. Yeah, so so is that what I guess I would ask is like he shows up at this bar and they're in Wisconsin. And yeah. like, there's like cowboy girls yeah. there. He doesn't know anything about America. He goes to Milwaukee during <laughs> Christmas. It's probably like negative five degrees. It was. Yeah. He shows up. He's like, take me to any bar. Some yeah. American. I love this subplot, by the way. Yeah. He shows up. Alicia Cuthbert looking so beautiful. Fine. Amazing. Straight off of the set of Girl Next Door. It works out really well. He yeah. goes and probably bangs them. All three of them. <laughs> If we're talking about banging the four sluts he met at the bar, yeah, that's that's and that's what the thing that's a slut shame them. But the movie kind of did that, right? Yeah. It's like they yeah. they shamed the women that like were at this thing. He, like you thought he was an idiot the whole movie, and like the first girl he meets, like they just loved his British accent. And it worked out, yeah, yeah. which was hilarious. And I love, I loved it. It was really yeah. funny. Um, so anyway, he he winds up coming back with Shannon Elizabeth, another yeah. great subplot. Let's move to Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> Freudian slip. Bilbo Baggins. Dildo Baggins. Bilbo Baggins. Dildo Baggins. Bilbo Baggins, the porno <laughs> stand-in, Martin Freeman, the guy yeah. who is actually in Lord of the Rings and plays Bilbo Baggins. Just, it's a funny subplot. They fall in love on a porno yeah. set. I don't really get what the hell their job Gave was. Gave the movie its good R rating that, yeah. that it deserved. That, yeah. that helped the guy stay and watch the movie. Yeah. That's really why I love couple the movie. Dips, but. A couple dips. Uh, the last one is Truman's wife from the Truman Show, yeah. Laura Linney. I just thought this didn't have any. There was no reason for this. It was just sad. It was really depressing. Yeah. It didn't really have a happy ending either. She got did it? like the twenty-year-old his her her, her youth Xerxes. Guy. <laughs> Xerxes. I didn't know it was Xerxes until <laughs> you told me it was the Xerxes. The cowboy from uh, yeah. from Westworld, <laughs> the robot cowboy. No, it's it's. I just didn't. This movie just. I don't know. This part was kind of depressing. And like, I guess the the truth is, it's like. Love is actually all around us. She loves her brother. Yeah, she, she loves her brother more than anything, and that's great. The actress yeah. goes on record and says that she wishes she didn't answer the phone. Yeah. I feel like he would have been okay if she didn't she answer She wanted to it. do that, you know, some of that stand-in sex. That was lovemaking. She wanted some of that stand-in sex on set. That was lovemaking, I think. Yeah. You know? So, anyway, overall, I really like the movie. I think it's a great Christmas movie. Every time I watch it, I pick up on something yeah. else. What do you think overall? Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was very long, but it felt quickly paced, as I said earlier. And so now, guys, now you know. That's the I say guys because I feel like most of our uh, most of our listeners are are are, are male, 
it seems as far as we haven't goes. had a lot of female. So if, right, if the females are out there in. and you're just silent, just drop us a line on Twitter or email us. Just let us know you're out there. Because that way, no, I'm sure you're out there. You're just very silent. You know? <laughs> that way, watch this movie alone. He didn't watch it with me, right? You, so we, if you're out there and you're also single, you know, drop me a line. We want that way to watch this movie yeah. with somebody next sure. year. So there we go. Get that way a date. Sure. So how are you, how are you, how'd you meet Bobby? Oh yeah, she was a friend of the, fan of the podcast. We, we watched Love <laughs> Actually together. <laughs> fan of the podcast. <laughs> so we should get out of here. We've been talking about Christmas long enough. But before we go, we're going to time to set up a, a kind of a mini plot fiction I have for you, where I kind of like did a spin on it, where I made up one plot, a fake Christmas movie, and set them up with three other ridiculous but real Christmas movie plots, and you did decide which one is fake. And when, uh, which three are the ones that were real. So I'm going to read them now. I'm going to rapid fire them four by four, give you a chance to digest them, and then you give me your guess. All right? Okay. So number one, title, Santa Baby. When Santa's estranged daughter, Mary, learns that her father has fallen too ill to finalize his Christmas plans for the year, she sets her sights on the North Pole and hatches a plan to update her father's outdated system. Depressed that her ideas for the holidays were dismissed, Mary Claus leaves her family behind in order to seek her fortune in New York City. Seek fame and fortune in New York City, sorry. Okay. Years later, Mary receives word that her dad is too ill anymore to travel and seizes the opportunity to return and finally give the system a complete overhaul. So Santa's daughter wants to take over the family business. I can see that being a case. I can right? see that. Okay. Real or fake? Santa baby. Uh, next next plot. So you're doing all four? Yeah, I'm going to okay, do all four, good. then you tell me which one's fake. Okay. Father Christmas. Fifty years after the death of Mrs. Claus, Santa, with the encouragement of his, uh, the encouragement of his rambunctious elves, decides to get back in the dating scene. However, Santa soon becomes addicted to the single-player lifestyle, hooking up with countless women along his delivery route on Christmas Eve. Lots of banging, no making love. <laughs> the following year, Santa, to his ultimate shock, receives multiple little gifts of his own. <laughs> Father Christmas. That's right. <laughs> Rated R. That's that's a that's an R-rated comedy. If you made that up, man, I'm gonna give you an award for that. Number three, holiday in handcuffs. Trudy loses her job and boyfriend Nick on the same day on Christmas Eve. On the edge of sanity and desperate to replace her family's ideal son-in-law with an even hunkier dr- dream prince, she kidnaps David at gunpoint to attend the family holidays in a secluded log cabin. Crazy lies and classic misunderstandings prevent David from convincing her family he's being held against his will. What's the title of that one? Holiday in Handcuffs. Okay. And finally, number four, Treevenge. <laughs> Treevenge details the horrifying reality of the lives of Christmas trees. After being hacked down and shipped away from their homes, they quickly become strung up, screwed into an upright position for all to see, exposed in a humiliation of garish decorations. But this Christmas will be different. This Christmas, the trees have had enough. This Christmas, the trees will fight back. Tree revenge. See, I feel like it should end with the trees will have their revenge. <laughs> the trees will have their revenge. <laughs> so, oh, man. so we have a PG-rated Santa's Daughter comedy. That sounds like a Hallmark movie to yeah, me. Santa Baby. Or uh, ABC Family. We have Father Christmas, an R-rated comedy. Okay. Uh, Holiday in Handcuffs, a PG-13 you know, family bring a boyfriend over the holidays kind of thing. And, you know, they uh, they realize that they love each other after all, even though he was kidnapped. Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. Number four, Tree Veg, ridiculous horror movie. That there are a lot of those out there. I See, I think that that one's real. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go backwards. That's definitely okay. real. Tree Veg is real. You're ruling out yeah, Tree Veg. Tree Veg is okay. real because I've seen movies like that. I haven't seen that one specifically, but okay. there's ones like Santa Slay with Bill Goldberg. Yes. Bleh, you're next. Yeah. Bleh. Like, you know. Ginger Dead Man with Gary Busey. Yeah. Ginger Dead. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, you know, yeah. that, so that's definitely real. I, yeah. I'm just ruling that out right okay. away. All right. I really, I think that the one where Santa fathers illegitimate children yeah. is is the fake one. Okay. But I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I'm going okay. with. Okay, if you have anything else you want to talk yourself through or anything, so. The first one I, I think is definitely a Hallmark or ABC Family movie where okay. it's like Santa's daughter. I could see that being like. It could be a plot. Not you now, see but it's like a Miley it, Cyrus yeah. or like a somebody. Nothing that would ju- make theaters, but yeah. made for TV. It's definitely a made for TV. There are thousands of made for TV like, ABC Family movies. tons of Hallmark yeah. ones. Like that's Hallmark. definitely real. Yeah. Um, right. Man, I, and the second one, I'm really between the second one and the third one, really. Okay. That third one is a little interesting to me, but I'm going to go the second one. I, I think that that's fake. I, I just. 
It's a little too raunchy, but I don't know. It I, totally made it up. Did you really? Yeah, you're right. You got it. Oh my you god, it. I made it. Finally. So here's that was the wrinkle. Excellent. I wanted to. I, I threw excellent. the phrase in the handcuff one. Classic misunderstanding. Yeah. I thought you'd take the bait because that's like a thing we say all the time with no. like Ben Stiller movies. So, so yeah. I, it's, first off, you have a Merry Christmas because that's a great, Thank great you. thing. I want to see that movie. Right? I would love to see that movie. We need to start getting some agents here. I don't know who listens to the show, but yeah. we got a lot of screenplays. We got that we a lot of ideas. Show. Yeah. So real quick, Santa Baby is stars JD McCarthy. Is okay. It's exactly an ABC Family movie. See, okay, good, yes. good. It sounds yeah. like it would be. Yeah, it stars JD McCarthy and no one else of any consequence. Uh, Holiday in Handcuffs is another ABC Family movie starring Melissa Joan Hart, who is Clarissa. Okay, and who's the hunk? Guess the hunk. Uh, ABC Family uh, movie. Who's the hunk? Mark Paul Gossler. So close. Is it? It's Mario Lopez. <laughs> Yeah. I'll give you. I'll give you half credit for that. See, because uh, there's a, there's a movie yeah. with Amy Smart and Mark Paul Gosler. It's like a Hallmark movie that it's I like remember. The Twelve Men of Christmas or twelve something dates, like that. Twelve dates of Christmas, yeah. maybe something and like I, that. Like, there's a movie, and I think she like, I forgot exactly what it is, but yeah. there, there was on Netflix. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yep. It's it's on Netflix. Mark Paul Gosler. Oh, yeah, Holiday Head Cuffs with Mary Lopez. So what's the third one or the fourth one then? Tree Veg is the horror Who's movie. In that? Uh, nobody's in it. It's actually a short. It's like okay. a, it's like a twenty minute short. But I watched it on YouTube. I, I like skip through it. It's, Is it awesome? It's ridiculous. Well, we'll post it. The, in the trees show are notes. like swallowing people. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Is it a cartoon or is it like no? Animation? It's real. And like the trees have their own language. They're like being shipped off in trucks. They're like, hey, what are they doing? What do we do to deserve this? See, like if it, I would imagine yeah. a tree would sound like this, like. <laughs> Because yeah. it's like blowing in the wind. Yeah. The like, language, it was like tongues. It was like speaking in tongues type of thing. Okay. It's like if like Star Wars language or like Star Trek language, yeah, Klingon, yeah. it sounded like Klingon in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, I would imagine it would yeah. sound like the, the, the like, whoosh, yeah. like, it was like, it looked like a student film. Like the whole thing is on YouTube. It's That's like 20 amazing. minutes. And it was, well, it was funny. You got to send him a link and we'll yeah, put we that in the show link. notes. Yeah. So I, did I defeat you? I finally you did. won. You got it. You that picked was up, hard, You picked up the bad one. I finally, finally won a game here, man. Yeah. This is, this is Congratulations. Good. It's Christmas. Good I was, job. I felt like giving it to you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. <laughs> They'll give it no, to you, man. No, no. I tried hard to stop you. You got it. So congratulations. So before we got out of here, uh, I want to say Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. And whatever you're, whether you're celebrating Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever it is. Thank you, everybody who's listened to this show over the yeah, years. 51. I mean, 51. We're, we have the best listeners. I say it on Twitter all the time. Thank you, everybody that supports the show. Honestly, we we, we wouldn't be a show without you yeah. guys. So really thank you so at, much. You're really good at hearing us. The, the best listeners. <laughs> we got the best listeners. Yeah. We have your, the best ear, deals. your ears are open. So uh, before we get out of here, we did get a new iTunes review. Uh, I want to say thank you. Short and sweet. Uh, Mr. 7183 says, funny guys and easy to listen to. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> 7183. Thank you so much. And, Do you think uh, he was born on July 1st, 1983? I, you know what? That's, that's like our though. wheelhouse for that like year board. So I bet it is. That's our target audience, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. we're 84. You're 84. Yep. So, so thanks, know. old man. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're tired of Comcast. Yeah. People saying Comcast. <laughs> Don't buy your grandkids. <laughs> Internet. <laughs> Internet for Christmas. <laughs> we are at 43 reviews right now, by the way. Uh, we have one from uh, Lee from the UK. It doesn't show up on the main store, but we're seven away from this JCVD split. Yeah, that's seven, man. <laughs> like, we'll try it, but it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm already stretching. Gonna I'm going to tear my groin. Yeah. So uh, thank you, everybody that left us a review. If you haven't had the chance, you enjoy the show. If you're a new listener, head out to iTunes, leave us a five-star review, give us some positive feedback, let us know what you think about the show. Write to us, thelastrowpodcast at gmail.com. We got a few new emails this week. Thanks, I haven't had a chance to write back to you guys, but I definitely will. Thanks to everybody that sends an email. We do write back to everybody. Thelastrowpodcast.com is our website on Twitter at the Last Row Pod. That's where we make most of our announcements when we have an off week or an off... Uh, off couple weeks facebook.com slash the last row pod like i said in the beginning we got some hot facebook action hot facebook action want to keep some uh some more hot action coming out for this year we got year. banged on facebook right. a lot <laughs> this week tons of facebook banging <laughs> instagram.com slash the last row pod we are on instagram we'll put some stuff on our story thanks everybody again it's been a great year we'll have some more before the end of the year thank you everybody hope you have a great and wonderful christmas and ho 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 Woo!